So, I made some fun animations before coming to class. No, I didn't. <laughs> I just found it on the internet. But so far, we covered numerical methods. Um, I, I really love martial arts and like kung fu stuff, etc. And you know, pretty much seen all the movies. So, all right, come on. We kicked and shattered numerical methods. Okay. And so far, what I've seen is, you know, if we are the 2450 class, and this is Python. So this looks like a dinosaur, but imagine it's a Python snake. Okay. So this is hilarious. <laughs> so we're kicking pythons, but okay. So next we are going to go to linear solvers. Okay, bring it on. All right, so with linear solvers, we're going to get to be dealing with some more interesting problems. Okay, um, and technically, the next portion of the chat of the of the course is going to be called solving algebraic equations. So we're going to solve linear equations and nonlinear equations. We're going to solve systems of linear equations, one nonlinear equation, or systems of nonlinear equations. And in those, the Taylor series is going to be very, very important. And it's going to get really complicated. Okay. Now compare that to differential equations, which are going to be a later subject. Okay. But this next topic for the next several weeks we're going to spend on solving algebraic equations. The first part is going to be on linear systems. And as usual, I'd like to tell you a story. Okay. This is from my colleagues at NIST. Uh, the hose line had not made it in the door, and the energy 
from the flow path that was now created coming up from the basement steps and now out the front door that they had just opened. That energy slammed that front door shut behind them. Uh, within a matter of two minutes, those first two firefighters uh, became trapped uh, and one of them incapacitated. Uh, the one uh, smaller of the two was able to uh, bust out uh, one window, which was not big enough for him, but of course that created another flow path. He got to a bigger window, bust that out, created a bigger flow path, but he was able to get out. Uh, he was then able to uh, get the engine crew who was still on the front porch, had not made entry yet, was able to get them to help him force open the front door and pull the other young man out. Uh, that young man was in a burn center for 45 days, nearly lost his life. NIST's Fire Dynamic Simulator, or FDS, was used to provide insight into the dynamics of this structure fire. The results of an FDS simulation are visualized with another NIST program, called Smoke View. The inputs and details for the FDS simulations are documented in NIST Technical Note 1870. The fire started in the basement, near the windows, on the rear of the structure. Based on an assessment of the fuel load in the burned area of the basement, the estimated heat release rate of the furnishings and interior finish was approximately 9 megawatts. However, the lack of oxygen limited the fire growth until the front door was opened. As seen in the heat release rate graph, after the door was opened and allowed additional oxygen to enter and mix with hot fuel gases in the basement, the fire heat release rate increased with some of the burning occurring on the first floor. Comparison of the simulated initial fire conditions in FDS versus the post-fire damage of the exterior of the basement corner, where the fire started. The wind was blowing from the rear of the house to the front. In the model, a steady wind speed of 20 miles per hour was used. The output from the FDS simulation can be used to provide insight to the flow path within the two-level structure. Fire gases move from regions of higher pressure to regions of lower pressure. Notice on the outside of the structure that the upwind side of the house, or the rear of the house, is under a higher pressure than the downwind side, or the front of the house. The inside of the house has been pressurized by the wind from the openings on the rear side and the pressure from the fire gases. Once the front door is opened, the high pressure on the rear of the outside of the house and the inside of the house equalize. One of the hazards to firefighters located in the exhaust portion of the flow path is convective heat transfer from the fire gases. Convective heat transfer depends on the velocity, the amount of turbulence, and the temperature of the fire gases. This video shows the change in gas velocity on the first floor after the front door was opened. Notice the distinct flow of hot gases from the doorway at the top of the basement stairs to the front door. An arrow shows how the hot gases traveling at 10 to 20 miles per hour would have impacted the front door and forced it closed behind the truck 809 crew. This video shows the calculated change in gas temperatures as a result of opening the front door, which increased the flow and mixing of the fire gases within the house. Wind can generate hazardous thermal conditions within a flow path. Stay upwind of the fire or keep the wind at your back. Uncoordinated ventilation or uncontrolled doors can also be the cause of increased thermal hazards within the flow path. When sizing up the structure fire, choose your okay. tactics. So, all I want to say is that the way we solve this problem is fundamentally based on systems of linear equations. We take the house, the environment around it, we create what we call a grid. We put a point at each of those grid points. We assign a value for the temperature, for the velocity, for the pressure, for the energy. And then we end up with systems of linear equations that we have to solve concurrently. Nothing different than what you've done in high school. 2x plus 5y equals 3 and 7x plus 8y equals 0. It's the same thing. Okay? Thank you. I'll see you on Thursday.